So before, I left you with this question. Why is it that you have volcanoes that are happening at places that are not necessarily plate boundaries, which is all kinds of weird? The answer is this. You essentially have these places inside the Earth's surface that have these really weird melting anomalies, and for whatever reason, uh, actually scientists don't really know why for sure yet. They're not super well understood. We have these areas where you just get these uh, super melted parts that come up presumably even from the core, and some of them rise to just below the surfaces here. Some of them actually rise all the way up to the surface and spread around. That's called a spreading plume, as shown right here, the spreading plume cut off at the top there. And it's all coming up through the mesosphere, which is a very important distinction to make. So you know it's coming through the mesosphere all the way from the core. As you can see, many of them are starting down there at the core and raising up through the asthenosphere. That's the weakest sphere. That's the part that we think about the convection happening in. Remember, that's our top convection model. So this is our uh, bottom mantle deep rising from the center of the Earth, which is uh, pretty scary, actually. And as a result, you get all these weird convection currents, but then you'll have some places, like you can see right over in this area here, where you just have places that are just coming up uh, that are not actually part of the mantle convection. And you know, some areas that, you know, make sense, like something sometimes will go down a little bit, like right there. You have cooler spots, like for example, you guys saw in the lab, you have some cooler spots. We'll do the red for right there, where uh, the two slabs are pushing down, where you're making your ridges. And then that can actually drag in, you see it dragging all the way in, can actually redirect the flow and make another convection current happening in this area, worse in that area. And all that's really fun. And here's a couple animations. The links will be in the description. It shows you really good uh, models. The second one is even 3D, which is fun. See, it's a 3 for 3D. But that still doesn't explain you know, how all this happens. And scientists still aren't really sure. But you see all kinds of areas, especially you know, America. There's some showing us Yellowstone and other stuff like that. Uh, the Ring of Fire has several. Uh, volcanoes around that convergent boundary, but they also still have many just in the middle of countries. Africa is a big one, just in the middle of the country. Just all these hot spots or older mantle plumes that show evidence that used to be hot spots uh, that were active, uh, well, not that long ago. And what that actually ends up leading to is this beautiful picture, uh, Hawaii. And Hawaii is a really interesting situation because it's occurring right in the middle, see by, right in the middle of the plate. In fact, you can actually see here's our active hotspot, and there's Hawaii right there, right in smack dab in the middle of the Pacific plate. There's other island chains down here that are in a similar situation, but we'll focus on Hawaii because America. So here's Hawaii. You can actually see that this first largest island, that's the youngest island. It's been there the longest, so it's been weathered the least. And this over here, that is the oldest of the islands. It's been weathered the most. You can imagine that the water just constantly, you know, getting all on it and doing water things. And so here it is, weathered down, weathered down, weathered down, weathered down, weathered down. The big island here actually still has active volcanoes on it. My aunt lives on the island right in this area here, oh, no. yeah, right in that area there, right next to an active volcano, which is kind of fun. And how that actually works is the plate moves over top of the hot spot, and as it moves, it creates a volcano. And so the question is, which way is the plate moving? You can see that we have uh, the youngest island here, oldest island back there, which means that this spot is right near the hot spot. So the hot spot is in this area here where the big island is. And this part of the plate used to be over, which means this part of the plate up here used to be over here. Which means if this part used to be here and now it's over there, then that means the entire plate is moving in this direction. So the plate is actually moving the green arrow. The plate is moving in that direction. There's a little video that'll come up here in a minute and that'll show you uh, basically that same thing.
All right, so this is uh, essentially a tectonic plate here, and then I'm going to use the fire here to represent upwelling magma that you'd have at a hot spot. And hopefully, I will not burn myself or the school down. If so, I've got a sink. Don't worry, I'm wearing goggles, so it'll save me. So here we have our plate, and you can see uh, as the plate moves over the hot spot, it does so in a very jerky motion because that's how plates move in a very jerky motion. And then, uh oh, it's burning, it's burning. Uh oh, that one got a little too happy. Oh, throw it away. Well, let's try it again here. And as you can see, the plate moves more quickly this time, and it moves just like that. But you can see, as it moves over the area, the paper is scorched a little bit. It maybe even catches fire a little bit, but that's okay. Put it out there. And you can see as it moves over it, it leaves a chain of the burning marks. See the chain of the burning marks? You can see there, 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 there. And that's essentially our island chain. You have that upwelling of magma, so you can actually track the movement of different plates, just like we could track the movement of this piece of paper, based on uh, the movement of the uh, burn marks. More evidence you can actually see off the coast, if you continue going, you'll actually see seamounts, those underwater active volcanoes. Now if we go to the next one, you can actually see there's a whole chain of the seamounts going through here. Starting with, you can imagine the, uh, the red one here. And it could show you that it's all underwater, all moving through here in a line that actually shows the movement of the plate. So our hotspots not only show us about divergent and convergent boundaries, but they also show us where hot spots have been occurring beneath. And you can even track back, if you look beyond the uh, islands of Hawaii, you'll actually see a huge amount of table mounts, old dormant hot spots that have been weathered down over the years. And if you look on the other side of the Hawaiian Islands, off to the, uh, like, past the big island, you actually find younger hot spots happening underneath the surface, showing that there's still active volcanism happening in that area. Awesome. So just to give you guys a little vocabularium review, because there's terms that you need to know for maybe quizzes and tests, there's the mantle plume. Now what a mantle plume is, is a little bit different from a hot spot. It is actually just a uh, section of rising magma that's rising up that doesn't quite get to the surface. Uh, Yellowstone's a pretty good example. It has this huge welling of magma that's just hanging out down there. There's hot spots, which is essentially a mantle plume that gets all up on the surface and just pushes through and does, you know, volcanic things. There are seamounts, which are underwater volcanoes. And those are the, uh, you know, they have a nice conical peak. You can find them at hot spots. You can also find them at plate boundaries. Then you also have table mounts, which all show the French call because why not? And those are old very tall still, but old seamounts that are dormant and they're flat due to everybody's favorite erosion. Thanks for watching the Philip Class video. Don't forget to do the Moodle things in the Moodling area, which would involve Moodling and then further Moodling, at least two bits of Moodling for your 20 points participation for this video. Make sure this is the end, not just of the PowerPoint, it's also the end of the unit means there's going to be a test, so make sure you study. Thanks for watching.